Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we got the 12 a bit early today, so I wanted to drop this one for you guys and let you know what is coming. Main things that they're going to talk about, a little touch on the Nightfall Adept kind of strike exclusive weapons, and then most of this is going to be about the new transmog system called Armor Synthesis. So let's jump in. Uh, we know Guardian Games is going on, obviously, so Warlocks, Hunters, Titans, you know, represent your class, get in there, do as much as you can each day, we'll have to see who comes out on top, we got a couple weeks until we get to the end of that one, remember they'll have the medal, or the cere podium ceremonies basically every Friday, that's when you're gonna kinda get your glow for the week, you're gonna kinda figure out basically if the glow's gonna last for the week, if you did the VIP, we may all look the same, we just will have to see, but overall, Guardian Games, make sure you get your Air Apparent. I put a video out for that one as well. Get the Catalyst, knock that stuff out because it is limited to this season. A couple other things that are limited to literally this week as well that you need to start towards the end. So we'll jump into that at the very end. So stay, you know, stay to the end for those. But the big thing um, after this real fast. So the Nightfall rotation, three new legendary we weapons will be available in the Nightfall rotation. And they will get the Adept treatment just when Grandmasters come out. So that being said, Palindrome, Shadow Price, and the Swarm, so the three that we previously had, will be on hiatus. They will not be strike exclusive weapons for the first half of the season. I'm guessing once Grandmasters kind of kick in or once they let those be available, then it will be the rotation of basically all of them to be adept weapons. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be, it says, when they return, all three will be available as potential post-game rewards when completing Nightfalls on featured weeks. So I don't know if a single one's going to be featured, if they're all going to be featured along with the new one. We will just honestly have to see how that goes. I can't quite get by the reading, so if you figure out what they're entirely saying there. But it says, when they return, all three will be available as potential post-game rewards when completing Nightfalls on featured weeks. So I don't know if you're going to have three old ones and three new ones, so it takes six weeks to go through them all. Still not sure the calendar date of all that stuff we'll have to see, but... If you want the palindrome, they state right down here, this is the last week for the palindrome because there are three weeks left in the season. So if you want a palindrome right now, this little hand cannon, you need to grind out your nightfalls this weekend because after that, I think it's going to go to the swarm and the final week is going to be the shadow price. That basically covers the intro stuff. Now let's get down to armor synthesis. Basically, this is transmog and how it's going to work. So they said they're excited to introduce armor synthesis into Destiny 2. Ada, Ada 1 will be doing it in the tower. Some of the screenshots are from test builds, so if things look a little weird, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Now, they said before they go too deep, basically this is how it works. You're going to defeat enemies to earn Synth Strand. Why we have three currencies, I don't know. This is more complicated than it needs to be in this first three lines. Spend Synth Strand on bounties to earn Synth Cord. Convert Synth Cord at the loom in the tower to into Synth Weave. So Synth Strand into Synth Cord. You use, you use the Synth Strand to buy the bounties to earn the Synth Cord. Take the Synth Cord to the loom in the tower to earn Synth Weave. Use Synth Weave to convert an unlocked armor piece, um, basically to unlock it for appearance, and that's going to turn into a universal ornament. To start, players will begin earning Synth Strand when defeating enemies in Destiny 2. After earning 150 Synth Strand, no idea how fast this stuff is going to drop, Players may visit Ada 1 in the tower to acquire class-specific bounties, which will reward Synth Cord. Uh, when developing this feature, an early goal was to ensure players could earn Synth Weave through numerous activities in Destiny 2. That way, players who spend most of their time in the Crucible could continue to do so and still engage in Armor Synthesis. There will be five categories of Armor Synthesis bounties, Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, Destinations, and Raids and Dungeons. A couple examples of the bounties that you will pick up, and remember the bounties get you synth cord and the synth cord turns into synth weave at the loom again i don't know the conversion i have to see if it takes you know five synth cord to buy one synth weave not sure bounties are going to be things like vanguard complete playlist strikes accumulate points at nightfall strikes capture zones and crucible complete crucible matches uh send and defeat blockers defeat primevals defeat nightmares on any destination defeat bosses while defeating the blind well Raids and dungeons, complete the final counter of any raid or dungeon, complete orbs of power, generate orbs of power in raids and dungeons. So basic stuff you're going to be doing all the time. They're not going to be overly difficult. I don't know how lengthy the bounties are going to be. They're probably not going to be time limited. So it's more an accumulation of, you know, is it going to be capture 10 zones or capture 100 zones in control? I don't know. Just have to see how, how lengthy some of these bounties are. If you pick up the wrong bounty, some scent strands will be refunded if you choose to abandon it. So think carefully because you're not going to get them all back. Basically, don't just go bounty, 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 
Crap, I didn't want to do that one. Make sure you think about what you buy because you're not going to get all that currency back. This is what the appearance customization screen is going to look like. So you're going to have your helmet pieces and your shaders. And then you can actually apply your shaders to all armor, which we'll cover here in a second. And you can see like the pieces of armor. So this is what your set is going to look like. You've got the pieces of armor, the shaders on each of them, and then you can see your full character out there. Shaders can be done, apply to all, and all that fun stuff. Uh, the pieces of armor per each set. This is pretty, pretty much what you're going to visually look like, and then your armor is going to be done in a different way to handle stats and that type of stuff. How many can you earn? And this is where, I, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I don't know if Bungie are going to see these. Now, this is the point where I will say before I read this, please do this in a constructive criticism manner. If you guys throw crazy stuff in the comments and start cursing or throw weird threats at Bungie on Twitter, don't do that. That does nobody any good and it's just poor behavior. Pretty much basically what you want to say is give them constructive criticism as to why you may or may not agree with these decisions. The reason I preface this, I've got a feeling people aren't going to like some of this. Players may earn up to 10 synth weave per class per season, except in season that are redacted, basically because... You're going to earn 10 additional synth weave per class through the introduction experience. So you're going to get 10 through the introductory transmog experience, and then you're going to be able to get 10 more normally through each season. Just this season, you get 20. Each piece of synth weave, if I get this currency right, is going to buy you a single piece of armor, not a set, a piece. So they state, for example, a hunter could pick four pieces of armor. So everything but their cloak plus 16 cloaks if you want to swap them out for your mood so you could have your helmet gauntlets chest legs all of that basically one set and then you could unlock all the cloaks you want to mess with your customization it's up to you so looks like this you can see some of these are unlocked some of these are locked and it's going to take the synth weave to basically unlock each piece for every slot so you are maxed at 10 pieces of armor that you're going to be able to unlock basically it's two sets of armor per season outside of the introduction you get 10 extra coming next season with the start of this whole process. We have two sets of armor you're going to be able to unlock and transmog per season. Uh, please note, some exceptions may, be, may apply. Universal ornaments may only be applied to legendary armor pieces. Exotic armor pieces cannot take the appearance of, uh, appearance of alternate armor. Um, so exotics you can't change. They do want to maintain uh, the ability for players to quickly identify and understand what exotic perks a player may have in all activities so that way you don't have to expect them. If you see a certain helm or a certain pair of boots or whatever on a, a guardian, especially in Crucible, you know what their exotic ability is going to be. I said the few exceptions are year one armor ornaments due to technical constraints, which is weird, but that could have been the random rolls and other such items. I don't know why there's it's still just the look of it. Not sure. Uh, but they're currently working on solutions for a future season. Basically, most year one armor ornaments. Vanguard, Crucible, Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, Prestige Raids, and Trials of the Nine. I got a feeling this is one of those sets people really wanted was Trials of the Nine to throw some of that on there. Because not everybody experienced that. It's kind of exclusive. And the fact that you can't unlock those, I have a feeling is going to kind of suck for some of the people who are like, I can be Trials of the Nine again. But nope, not at least yet. They're going to work on it though. Ornaments can still be applied if the base armor is from an activity that the or the ornament originates uh if a crucible if a player owns crucible ornaments from curse of osiris which was literally the first expansion after destiny 2 launched they may be applied to crucible armor pieces at no cost however these ornaments cannot be applied to seasonal armor so there's some weird technical glitches it seems with some of the older armor additionally all base armor appearances from 2018 and 2019 solstice of heroes armor some pretty cool looking stuff will be available for armor synthesis. However, due to an issue where 2018 and 2019 glows cannot be socketed alongside armor appearances in the new Guardian appearance system, the glows will not be supported. So if you grinded for those, I am sorry. Solstice 2020 armor glows were developed with the Guardian appearance system in mind and players will retain the white armor glows if it was earned during the event. Subclass based glows will now continue to function on the universal ornaments as well. So you got some technical limitations on older stuff, year one armor, year two, stuff like that. There's some issues. So when you get in there, you might have to check and see. Maybe there's a preview system, hopefully. Doesn't seem like everything is going to work at first. Oh, there's a lot of armor sets out there. There's like 500 pieces or some ridiculous amount. Just not all of them are going to work, especially some of the oldest ones. So keep that in mind when you start planning where to spend your armor synthesis synth weave. And here's the other side that is probably going to uh, not rub people the right direction. 
Eververse will offer synth weave templates for direct purchase through the Guardian appearance screen. Players may either purchase a single synth weave or they may purchase in a piece of five piece bundle. Synth weave is what you use to unlock the pieces of armor as ornaments. Now you can you can earn 10 of these per season. After that, if you want more in that season, step up to the Eververse because you're gonna buy it. Uh, for reference, universal ornament bundles are gonna be 1500 silver. It's like the universal, the ornament bundle for like a seasonal ornament set, it's 1500 silver. If you wanna unlock some of the old stuff, it's a thousand. How much is that? It's basically 10 bucks. Uh, I think 100 silver is like a dollar, at least in, you know, US dollars conversions to other places. I'm not sure if that's going to be worse, but either way, pretty much what we read here is the fact that you are limited per season in how many you can earn to unlock. If you want to do any more, time to open the wallet. Personally, I'm not a fan of there being a limitation on the season. If somebody wants to just grind out like 100 armor pieces in a season, let them. That's just my opinion. There should not be a limit within a season. I don't know how hard it is going to be to unlock these things. Maybe they could make like after your first 10, some of the bounties like jack up in difficulty. I don't know. But either way, the fact that it's limited is means they're pushing you towards the Eververse store pretty much straight out of the gate. For people that have been playing this game for like four years now, they have a lot of stuff that they're going to want to toy around with and you're limited to four armor sets first. You're going to have to be very particular or patient or open the wallet so you can wait for future seasons to earn a couple more sets each season or you can spend away and unlock stuff. There's a Twitter thread out there with some interesting math. If you wanted to buy everything that was available, you would spend way too much money on a game and basically have built two ridiculously crazy powerful PCs. It's not worth it. So maybe they'll get some pushback on this one. Maybe it will get cheaper. Maybe they'll unlock the unlimited amount for now. Biggest thing I can say, please, if you do speak with your wallets, the best thing I can say, if you don't approve of this as a decision, don't buy the synth wave template bundles. Be particular in the ones you unlock. You know you're going to be getting new armor in future seasons. Some of that still looks cool. You still got bright dust. Speak with your wallet. If you don't like this decision, don't buy any of the bundles. I'm not going to. So I'm usually not going to care as much about Drestiny as some people, since some people are really into the cosmetics. If you can't find four armor sets to start and then two others each season and spend your bright dust on some of those universal ornament bundles, then, you know, go nuts. If you just got a whale and you're just, you know, throwing away money, that's up to you. But if you don't like this decision, don't buy any of them and maybe they will listen. That aside, we're going to get down here to shaders. Um, they finally are going to be able to apply all. And you will be able to, you know, basically apply a shader to every piece of armor, which is a good thing. You can get a preview of what it looks like. For some reason, it does still cost glimmer, which is weird. So you've got 500 Glimmer per armor piece, 2,500 Glimmer total. Why it still costs Glimmer? I don't know. They're just shaders. Well, I mean, you can paint armor and do a bunch of other stuff. You can just paint stuff in other games. I don't know why it has to cost Glimmer. It's not that big of a deal, but I still don't know why it does. It's got to be, again, this is where we get back to how deep some of the systems are built into Destiny, where they can only make certain changes, like applying a shader still must cause some transaction to happen with Glimmer. If they take that out, I feel like they're going to break a system. That's the only reason I can imagine it's there. It's not much, but it still seems to be there. Uh, shaders will continue to be earned through various activities or can be purchased using Bright Dust or Silver from Eververse with the update to Shaders. Uh, the shaders that currently are 40 Bright Dust are now going to be 300 Bright Dust to unlock them. This will continue to be a one-time purchase. And that's the thing. All shaders are now no longer consumable, which is a good thing, mind you. Um, currently, shaders are a one-time consumable that must be repurchased. They finally changed that, and they will be basically just applicable all the time. If you've ever earned it, it's an available shader. It just takes Glimmer to apply it to, you know, whatever ornament you're looking at. But you don't have to buy, like, 20 of them and manage your shader screen. So I'm so happy they're going to get rid of that. Weird the Glimmer's still there, but, you know, apply to all is a good thing, and the consumable nature is gone. So that's a big win. Two thumbs up wherever my hands on my camera go. Two thumbs up on that one is huge. Glimmer's just got to be a weird system thing. That's just strange. Um... The Bright Dust increase, I mean, you are only going to have to buy it once, but if I do buy it once and then pull it out of my collections, I still usually pull that out for Legendary Shards, which I have plenty of those, so maybe that's not a big deal to me, maybe it is to you. Either way, the shader price is going up to 300 for Bright Dust, so keep that in mind. Um, there is a new Prime Gaming reward, so pair up your Bungie Rewards account with Prime Gaming, go in there, claim a couple of these cool things, you got the Ramen emote, couple cool ships, 
They're free. Just go claim them. Doesn't take much besides the link in your two accounts. Uh, for fair game, couple things. This is the last thing I wanted to point out. The Season of the Chosen seal. If you want to buy the little metal seal or earn it in-game, there are things you have to start this week. Like right now before reset on the 27th. Uh, when that happens, and if you haven't started phase one of these things, you will not be able to earn the seal because you have to do stuff over a three-week time period. Uh, step one, acquisition of the Scannables in the Presage mission is required for the Season of the Chosen Seal. Scannables are collected over a three-week period. Players need to collect all the Scannables in each week and then claim the Associated Trident before the weekly reset. With the following weekly reset, the next set of Scannables will be unlocked. So earn the Scannables for the Presage mission, unlock them, hit the Triumph, and then next week you'll be able to get the next one, and the final week you'll be able to get the next one, but you have to do it now, if you don't do this before April 27th, when Daily Reset happens, which is 10 a.m. Pacific time, you won't be able to finish it. Same thing down here. If you also haven't bought the chosen mods from the War Table, there's three sets of them. There's six total. You need to buy those in the three-week rotation. So again, buy them now. Um, that's the main piece. So make sure you get your scannables done for the Presage mission. Make sure you get the mods from the War Table if you want that chosen seal and you don't do those things this week, you will not be able to. I still actually have to, I think, get one more of these Presage mission scannables. So jump on that. Don't forget about it. Other than that, they've got some known issues with Guardian games and things of that nature. Movie of the weeks are always cool. They got the artists of the week. And that being said, um, you know, Guardian games is going on. So there is going to be some other stuff coming in future TWABs, that type of thing. But for now, the main piece is we've got an explanation of how Transmog is going to work. Um, shaders being opened up is a good thing. The fact that you're limited per season to 10, I'm not a fan. You should basically be able to earn as many as you, you want until you're blue in the face. And then finally, when you're like, okay, I don't want to earn anymore, you know, you can take my money then. But if you cap it right from the start, I'm not a fan as there are so many in there. And then the fact that there are three currencies. We have Synth Strand to Synth Cord to Synth Weave just to do Transmog. That seems a bit excessive in my mind. I don't know why it's so much, but we'll just have to go with that. So that is the TWAB this week um, podcast. We will be talking about this a bit more in depth and Guardian Games tomorrow morning. Uh, this week, it's just going to be Lord Cognito and I on the last word. It will be 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So tune in for that one. Twitch.tv slash If you guys are new to this channel and you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Leave your comments, constructive criticism thoughts. Guys, don't go cursing in my comments or it's going to get deleted. Um, throw those comments below, say hello if you want to, if you're new, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell, and you guys can also always find me over on Twitter. Thank you all very much, I will see you soon, have an awesome one, and talk to you guys in the morning, hopefully in chat in the podcast.